My guest on the podcast today is somebody I've gotten to know quite well over the last two years. We actually met Mike through, I met you via your email list through a mutual friend, Michael Hudson, who is my third guest on this show and then came back around again. He's been on twice. So Mike, we've been talking about this for a while. Finally here, my guest today is Mike Kim. He's the best-selling author of You Are the Brand, and he's a strategist and man, all sorts of other things that we're going to get into today. Mike, thanks for being on. Dude, I am pumped to be here. Uh, I love your show. I'm honored to be on. Uh, shout out to Michael Hudson for for making the connect one way or another. I've known him yeah. for years and years. And uh, so I'm just glad to be here. Yeah, mutual friends. It is quite the small world. So you're also a podcaster. You've, you're have a longtime podcaster. You do a lot of podcast guests. So I think we're going to do some riffing today, most likely. You know, between you and All I, right. we have, God, between <laughs> you and I, we must have, what, 500 plus episodes under our belt? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So let's, uh, and I'm also excited about this because I know Mike in a variety of ways. And also, I have no idea how you're going to answer most of these questions, which is makes it even more fun. Because usually I have one or the other. I have like somebody I really know well. I'm like, oh, I kind of think I know what they're going to say. Or I have somebody I've literally never met before. And you're like in between. I'm like, all right, it's going to get to know Mike. Well, so Mike, let's kick it off here. What's something you nerd out about? Ooh, what do I nerd out about? Okay. Um, I will nerd out and watch endless YouTube videos about outer space. <laughs> and like the universe um usually i'm high when i do this i'll be yeah. full 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 confidence sure and um <clears throat> i know we'll never you know like humanity will never understand all the answers but it just i mean i nerd about i nerd out about that stuff i will like watch space. hours and hours of it yeah like what's out there how big the universe really is you know, um, they've got the new telescope that went out that sort of complements the Hubble telescope. And mm-hmm. um, it's it's just like, what is out there? Are we really on this floating rock in the middle of nowhere by ourselves, which is terrifying. And yeah. I think it's more terrifying than if there were aliens or other life beings out there. I mean, totally. if, we're hit, if this is it, I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, yeah. give me all the drugs <laughs> now. Uh, if this, if this is it, like, give it to me now, you know? Um, but I nerd out about that stuff. Like I'm not a scientist, but I've always been fascinated by outer space and, you know, you and I are about the same age. I'm in my forties now and like, we're not old, but we're not young. And we're like old enough to know that like, gosh, life is really short. We're very mortal. Right. Um, and I'm just like, what is out there? I've never really thought about this. You know, yeah. and I nerd out about that stuff. Were you a, were you like an astronaut kid when you were little? Is that something that you thought was cool? And do you like, are you like a sci-fi, like sport, space movies and all those sort of things? I loved outer space stuff. I just was not good at science or math. And so yeah. I never really pursued it. Like I loved it like as a kid and I loved Star Wars, but never really got into Star Trek. I love mm-hmm. Star Wars. I know the sound, science is all wonky there, and I don't watch too much sci-fi stuff because most of the time, sci-fi stuff, uh, especially probably the last 20 years, has just become an allegory for political issues. Yeah, true. You know, so the long, long-eared aliens hate the short-eared aliens, and why can't they just get along? And it's like just this big allegory for like, earthly politics i'm like no i don't want to watch this this stuff yeah and they're, right? and I'm also gonna... they're like we're fighting over universe which is almost infinitesimal and we could each have a very big portion of this and we'd all be great yeah just go over no. there like there's nobody over there yeah so it's like uh, so i don't get too much into the sci-fi stuff um per se uh more recently uh i have been buying all the toys that my parents could not afford to get me or refuse to get me yeah dude if you look over here on the side uh i just got a shipment of transformers i saw that on instagram every transformer autobot that i wanted as a kid now these are not the original ones they're like the reissues but i just have them in a box and i i'm i haven't opened them yet and i'm like i don't want to open them but i want to open them and it's just this weird thing that i'm going through right now i maybe this is what midlife people do in our day and age you know (laughs) yeah well Um, you know so Transformers. I'm my version of that. Mike is Legos. I was, and I love Transformers too. I actually, I wanted the the Decepticon f- uh, plane back in the day. I forget what his name is, but it's like the Star. It screen. was like basically like an F14 Tomcat. But yeah, oh, you have. Mike's about to go pull it. Yeah, he's got it. 
Yeah, that's it. Yep, yeah. exactly. What's that Decepticon's yeah. name? Uh, Starscream. Starscream. Yeah, and I remember yep. my parents wouldn't yep. buy it for me. I had yep. Similar. My version of that is Legos. Oh, man, it's cool. I just bought the Legos Fender guitar at Target and <laughs> built it, and it's really cool. It's small, but, you know, it's funny. Like, it's funny you say this because I feel the same way. You get into your, you know, you, you do well in business and you have some additional income, and then you're like, what are all the therapeutic things I have going on that I can address through just going and doing it now? Yeah. For me, well, unfortunately, it's, it's because, uh, technology and guitars, which is yeah. a lot more expensive than transformers. It's weird too, because like, I'll be like, no, I can definitely afford this. Like these yeah. were not really that expensive. They were like 50 bucks a piece. And I bought like six of them yeah. and I will blow, I will blow $300 a night on dinner and drinks. Right. Totally. Right. And I'm like, and then like all this resistance like bubbles up to the surface. I'm like, no, why would I? That's a waste of money. And I'm like hearing myself say, you're a coach, right? And I, mm-hmm. I coach people and like, I yeah. get what's kind of going on, but it's just so weird. We have this script and this narrative and I'm like, no, I don't deserve that. Or that's like a waste of money. Yeah. And like, that's exactly what my parents probably said to me. Like, God yep. bless them. You know, they meant the, yep. the best they could, but like, that's probably what they said to me about those toys. Um, yeah. I definitely know my dad would make fun of me for playing with those toys. He's like, why are you always changing the toys and massaging them and stuff like that? I'm like, what an ass, you know, uh, we're good now, right? We're good now. Um, yeah. But like, I would just think about that. Like when you get into your twenties and thirties, like you said, you get busy, you get, you get grinding at work and like, you know, you, you started a family and, and yeah. then now we're like at this point and we're just like, wait, I think I want to just go get it for the hell, for the hell of yeah. it. So, yeah. Yeah. My my version of this, and then we're gonna we're gonna move on here because I think you and I could probably geek out about this. My real version of this, because I I try to be cautious with spending. My real version of this is I've been a gamer since I was like six or seven, and I know you're a gamer as well. Is literally anything that comes out for gaming that I want to get, I just get. I'm like, <laughs> oh, that game that looks okay. Let me spend it. Um, and so yes, I was one of the I was one of the PS5 paid double retail price the day like the day after it came out. Oh, totally. so Mike, I got that too. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a feeling you did. So, Mike, what's something that is in your comfort zone, and you know it's going to be outside of somebody else? And I'm going to take a few of the things I know you do a lot, just off the table, and you probably weren't going to answer me with no speaking, no like wrote a book. Maybe that is outside your comfort zone, but speaking, writing, book, all these things, people are like I would never do that. Like you've done those things. So, what is something that is in your wheelhouse that you know other people will not do? I will try almost anything once. I know that's very mm-hmm. vague. Um, mm-hmm. I'm just wired that way. Mm-hmm. The more and more of these personality tests that I do, um, recently I got into human design. Yeah. Not too in depth, but I'm a one three on the human design and I, I don't really know what that meant. I didn't really know what that meant. Channel but I, stuff and- yeah, all this kind of woo-woo stuff. And I, I, I read the assessment. I was like, oh, that's totally me. How do they know this? Yeah. And one of the characteristics is that I'm a martyr. And I was like, what does that mean? And it basically just means that no matter what advice I get from people, um, no matter what kind of cautionary tales I hear, whatever they tell me, I'm not going to listen. I just have to find out for myself. Um, so I, I mentioned before, like I'd watch all these space videos when I'm high. Uh, I would delve in, I would dabble into psychedelics um, therapeutically, not just to get high or whatever, not just to like have a good time. Uh, I've mostly done it in really intentional settings. Um, that makes people uncomfortable when I talk about that with them. Um, other things that are like maybe more normal day to day. I think that I'm very comfortable uh, making friends with very different types of people. I've always noticed that I was good at that. I can befriend the, you know, kind of uppity, like bougie, snooty, you know, people in that part of society and i can befriend like the local you know blue collar in the bar kind of guy and i think i got that a lot from my musician days you know and um it's just been easy to 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 do that and then um golf i just love i like golf i like playing golf some people hate it because they're bad at all right mike so what's something that is outside your comfort zone and i love asking people that go oh, i'm pretty much up for anything i've had a bunch of guests that have said that i'm like all right cool so i'm going to ask you anyway what's something that is outside of your comfort zone uh dancing i'm the worst dancer ever 
Uh, I would joke with people that all the rhythm in my body is from my elbow to my finger. Cause you know, I can play guitar and I can yeah. play piano and I've rhythm there, but nothing else in my body. Um, after I got divorced, I like dated for the real first time in my life. Like my ex-wife was really the only second, she was the second girl I ever really dated. Yeah. And that was in my twenties, my, my early twenties. So I didn't go out. And so when I got divorced, like I'm in my late thirties, early forties, like whatever. And my friends are taking me out, not necessarily to the club with a bunch of 20 somethings, but just to bars. And like you were yeah. in the city. Oh, right. Yeah. And my buddy, Henry, who you've met mm-hmm. is like one, literally like, he i'm not trying to be like weird or anything but like or stereotypical but he is like a black guy in a korean body <laughs> like we literally yeah, yeah. went to a bar um in the city downtown and it was predominantly african-american bar and we just walked out like dude what are we doing here man you say no it's always a good time here he starts dancing all these people crowd around him because they're just uh... like what is this dude with his moves and I, we, he did the same thing in dc at a club uh, we went to Park and 14th in DC, and it's like predominantly a black club. And yeah. all these girls and guys would just walk up, like, what is this dude doing? And I'm just standing over there like a wallflower. Um, we went out with some of his work friends one time here in the city. And um, one of his friends, Stephanie, she's a Latina girl. She's like, Mike, I'm going to help you dance. This is, you are so pathetic. This is so sad. I mean, she meant it in good fun. She's like, move yeah. like this. Move. I'm like, dude, I can't, I cannot do this. So it's outside of my comfort zone. And I know people say this, Jason, like no yeah. one's really looking at you, but no, they're definitely looking at me. I'm a <laughs> six foot three Korean guy. We are not very common when, a, when I walk in, people are like, what is that? And then I start dancing. They're like, oh my, no, no, like, bro, no. no. So that is totally outside my comfort zone. I still will do it. Um, it will depend what other altered states I'm in, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I may be able to do it a little bit more without yeah. being sheepish, but that is absolutely outside my comfort zone. No, oh, man. I'm a challenger. So I'm like, all right, like, how can we get Mike on the floor sometime? But I what I will say is the good news is you'll never be mistaken for a member of a K-pop band. That's because you're tall and you don't dance. That's true. And I'm like, I'm not, I don't look feminine. I, yeah, at least no, I don't exactly. think so. Right. And that's how K-pop stars are bred. Like they, right, they're, totally. they're fashioned to look that way. Right. Um, oh, it's yeah. an intentional thing. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. For everybody listening, like we have a lot of mutual friends that are going to be like, no, Mike, it's, we're going to make it happen. Like you're not going to oh, yeah. have a choice at some point. That's fine. I'm I'm down if it's with people yeah. I know, but in, in total general public no yeah but i'm not i'm not great it. either so we, we can we can sit in the corner in misery um <laughs> or misery or not misery like we don't you know give no f's at some point so mike mm-hmm. you do a you do a lot of speaking on a variety of topics we give you five minutes and you get to choose one thing to speak to all of us about and everybody gets to hear it what is it that you would talk to us about and what would you want us to do at the end of those five minutes i would say in five minutes, I would make a case for why being honest with yourself is the best way to live mm. and to to find happiness. I do a lot of things on the business side. I help people with their businesses, help them market things and market themselves. And I can only help them if they're really, really honest with themselves, right? Like, it, it, And that's what I love about business. If they're just like, hey, I want to make more money and I want to be famous, great. I almost feel like a lawyer. I'm like, just tell me the truth. I'm not going to judge you. Yeah. But if you don't, t- if you lie to me, if you're not honest about what you really, really want and you sugarcoat it, we're not going to get anywhere. And I think uh, as I've kind of moved into, you know, this stage of my life, um, <laughs> and you just said, you know, just don't give any Fs, you know, and 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 that's really like what it's about. Like, yeah, I think it's, if we just had more people in the world who could be more honest with themselves, they would stop hiding and deceiving. And then it would actually allow them to see what their motives are, why they want certain things. And they'd probably make healthier choices. I actually believe in humanity Mm -hmm. if we take the mask off. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But the more we try to hide things or ulterior motives and a lot of subversive stuff. And I come from Asian culture. it's, It's very much like that. Yeah. You know, everything's implied. It's not straightforward. Um, and there's all these, you know, who wrote the book of unwritten rules? Can we just throw it out? 
Oh, yeah. it doesn't exist, right? But uh, that's yeah. what I would talk about in some way, shape, or form. That. You know? Yeah, I love that. That's also, uh, I think you and I know we have a similar personality type, and mm-hmm. you know, even on assessments, and like that's a very high I thing as well as you're like mm-hmm. rules. Those are suggestions. Yeah, it's it's so like, funny because I I grew up in like the church world, right? That was my first yeah. real career, and. That whole world is just about pretending that you're good. Totally. Right? And I mean, everything is pretense. I'm not saying that like 100% of it is artificial or fake, Mm -hmm. but I know for a fact, count like probably every married couple that's gone to church has at least once fought in the car on the way to church, got out of the parking lot and was a bless you. God bless you. How are you doing? You know, Uh, we could also say, uh, I could factually say the subway would be another place that that would happen. Yes. Yes, exactly. (laughs) And you go into this world and like, you know, I, I became a better person once I stopped pretending I was a good person Mm. because I was just more honest about myself and what I want and what my faults were and um, what my motives were. And that just kind of opened the veil, not just in front of other people, but to myself. Mm-hmm. And if we could do that as a society and just help people do that, uh, I think things would make a, 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 it would be a long change, but it would be for the better. It'd be a step in the right direction, a small step, yeah. but it'd be a step in the right direction. Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of work that I do and you do as well. So it's, it's cool. I like that too. When <clears throat> it reminds me, and before we go to the commercial break here, it, like when you, you know, when you're coaching somebody as we both do and you say, what do you want to get out of this relationship? And they're like, then they feed like my grandparents, good old Kansas people. They, they call, they feed you a line of bullshit. Mm. And you're like, you just know it. And you're like, what do you really want? Right. Like, Oh, I want to be, make more of an impact at work. I'm like, uh huh. This isn't an interview. You're paying me. <laughs> what do you really want? You know, like I want to work less hours and make more money. Great. So, okay. Great. So how do we do that? Right. If you're like, and you know, this too, working with a lot of coaches and such, a lot of it's like, I want to make more of a global impact and serve more people. I'm like, is that really what you want? Or is that the way you want to make more money? Right. And right. yes, you get, and the good news is you can actually do both. It's not yeah. an either or that's right. cool. I love that, Mike. All right. That's great. I hope you, I think you should give that speech if you haven't already. I'm working on it. Nice. <laughs> All right. We're going to take a brief commercial break. We'll be right back after this. The Talking to Cool People podcast is brought to you by Jason Frizzell Coaching. Jason works with amazing people who are looking to find and develop their passion and purpose and create their journey to wherever it is they want to go. Check us out at jasonfrizzell.com, Facebook, or on Instagram. Jason loves hearing from anyone who thinks it would be cool to connect, to be coached, or to be a guest on our show. Email him at podcast at jasonfrizzell.com or DM him on Facebook and Instagram. And now, back to some more amazing conversation on talking to cool people. All right, Mike, we're back. And so what do we know about you so far? We know you're an adult who likes toys. Me too. <laughs> I get That's high the, and watch videos on yeah, space. You, you get high and watch uh, you and Neil uh, DeGrasse Tyson are good friends. Yeah, yeah I, I totally, high and watch space videos. You can't I'm dance. Horrible at dancing. Yep. Horrible at dancing. And uh, you've you've had a lot of tra- you've had a lot of tra- speaking of transformation. You had a lot of transformation in your life. You mentioned you were divorced. You mentioned you came from the church world. And I know, like, we may want to talk about this, we may not. But like, what else do you want everybody listening to know about you? Hmm. I would, I, I think I, what I would say is that I've just been a good friend to people. That's what I want to be known as, mm. you know, that Mike was just a good friend. Um, I think if I die, there'll be a lot of stories shared about me <laughs> and I've just, I've just, dude, this guy said to me years ago and I just, it just stuck with me. Um, uh, we were having drinks at a marketing conference, right? And I was speaking at that event, and so was he. And we knew a lot of the same people. And we finally sat down. His name is Mark. Um, and we were just chatting. We had not really known each other. Uh, we knew a lot of the same people. And 
he, he asked me a similar question, like, Hey, what's going on with your life and blah, blah, blah. I was like, dude, I don't know. I should, I should probably be dead. The way I've lived my life these last four or five years, like I was a good boy in my twenties and I caught up for all those years in just like a three year period. Right. Mm. And he goes to me, he's like, no, you know, the way that I see life is that, uh, if the bar tab is always in your favor, the universe isn't going to take you out yet. And so you just keep buying drinks for people and like running up the tab and you pay the tab. Like the universe is going to bring good things back to you. And it was just a different Mm. way of saying like, do good to people and the balance will always like even out for you. And um, yeah. And so I, even before that, I I feel like I've I've lived my life that way. Uh, I try to be really generous. Um, I'll spot people all the time when we go out, and um, it just makes for memories. I can't take any of this. With, I can't take any of the Transformers toys with me. I know that for sure. I you don't know that for sure, them. Mike. That's that. That's true. It could materialize into the ether. And I can be wherever we go when we all die. Wouldn't that be the joke if the only thing you could take with you is the toys that you bought as an adult that you wanted as a child? <laughs> That's like the one thing you actually could take with you into the next whatever it is. I'd be like, wow, really? This was okay. All right. You know, um, but yeah, that I think that's what I would want people to know is that um, I've just tried to be a good friend to people. Mm-hmm. Um, and that has made my life. Uh, infinitely more fulfilling and rich yeah. in every way. What makes a good friend? Low maintenance, high quality. Yeah. I was thinking about this like a couple months sure. ago. Yeah. And I just, I just, I was like thinking about my best friends, like the friends you call when you have one phone call in jail. Yeah. Right. And um, I'm like, what is it about all these friends that I have a lot and I'm like, you know what it is? It's high quality, low maintenance. And that just covers it all. Yeah. High quality, low maintenance. It you. just covers it all. Right. Yeah. And it's just like hold space for people, let them be themselves, get in their face when they're doing dumb crap. Right. Or living below the line for themselves. Um, earlier in, in 2022, I had three or four friends come through New York and they were all going through, um, divorces or just been divorced Mm. and they all came here and crashed at my place for like a few days each like in consecutive weeks it was like a rotating door right it was a revolving door and i spent like crazy money that month my accountant was like what are you doing how do you spend like eighteen thousand dollars in a month i was like oh we just held divorce parties for like bottle service yeah yeah all my friends that were coming through and like I'm like, okay, that was fun. That was just, you know, yeah. you just, but like, I was also like, Hey, I'm here. Do whatever you want. We had like really serious conversations and then we just had a lot of fun. Right. Yeah. And to me, uh, just being a good friend means allowing people to be themselves, to be honest, that kind of tracks back to what I said a few minutes ago. Mm-hmm. And we have such very few people, people have very few folks like that in their lives. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's tough. Right. Yeah, something that popped in for me, and that is, it's also a great type of people to do business with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm, I was running through my mind of who my high quality, low maintenance friends are, and I have quite a few as well, which is nice. And I was running through my list of clients that I love working with, which is most of them. I'm like, what do I love about working with them? Oh, like, yeah, they're really high quality. We have great conversations. They do the work, and then they're not high maintenance because. Mm-hmm. As I'm sure you coach people too, you you fire your high maintenance clients because they're not worth it, no matter yeah. what they're paying you. Yeah, and and and, mm-hmm. and I think mm-hmm. the other thing that I'm realizing too is, as you say that, I think I'm just a little bit older than you. As you get into your 40s, you fire those as friends too. I mean, I have like people. I'm like, I know you're calling me. I know you're going to ask me for something, or you're going to need something, mm-hmm. and you've never asked me what I like, what I want to talk about, or anything. Mm-hmm. And at some point, that just right. becomes it's one side too much. Yeah. yeah. So Mike, it's one sided. And I've, I've seen more couples, even, you know, we're at the age where more people we know are going to get divorced than married. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. And you, yeah. and I can see this now clear as day. I'm like, oh, yeah, those two are not, not going to make it. Like, unless something drastic changes on both sides, like this is the, the, the balance sheet is not working here. Yeah. You know, and so, yeah. So, yeah. So. What, um, what do you want to ask me that I can answer for everybody? I'm a little scared. I'm not going to lie. 
Mm. Um, Scared in the best way possible. If you could do one thing over again from your past, what would it be? One thing over again from my past. Good or bad? Yeah. Oh, that's the, actually, this feels low stakes. I'm, I'm going to give you the the low stakes answer that came up, and then I'm going to think as I'm answering it. I wish I would have started playing guitar earlier. Like, I mm. wish I'd, so I had, so I took three years of piano lessons, and I was just, I'm just not a piano kid. And, and now I play guitar, and I'm pretty decent, but I didn't start till I was 27. And I look at these, like, these kids in like 18, 19, and they shred. Because oh, yeah. as a, you know, this, um, I know you've got, you've got some nephews and kids like you've got an almost seven year old and a two year old, these kids, their brains are sponges for this stuff. You're like, Oh, here's how you do this. Here, and they practice and they get it. And now as an adult, I'm like, I feel decrepit sometimes. I'm like, I think I could play that thing. So I would want to do that. And actually the, the, um, the more, the more, I guess, elevated answer to that, which relates to that, that you said is get more like really own my truth. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot. I spent most of my corporate career. Like I liked it. I liked the people. I thought I was kind of myself, but I wasn't really owning who I really was or my truth. Cause I thought that's what I had to do. And in some ways I think when you work at companies, you do. Mm -hmm. And similar to you now, like I give F's, but I more myself than ever was before. And it's just a lot more delightful. Mm -hmm. It's like, Hey, here's my truth or say no more. And I think I spent a lot of time not doing that or how that relates, how that shows up for me is like trying to add value all the time. And that wasn't sales. You add value. Nice. <laughs> hey, your mic cut out real quick. I don't know what's going on today. Yeah, hold on. I don't know if it's on my end or on yours. I want to make sure you're good for your future interviews too today. Let me see. Hopefully it's my AirPods, but they're... Try talking one more time. Test, test. I don't hear you. Test, test. Hold on, let me just change it on my Zoom. Maybe that's what it's going Yeah. On. Test, test. One more time. Test, test. Okay, cool. So All I think right. it's on your side because I just switched and Zoom is reading my microphone. I can yeah, see the it's, it's something's gotta be up. I don't know. That's all right. On. My bad. I heard everything is, but yeah, we can go to cool. the next question. Yeah, yeah. I think cool. yeah, great. All right. Awesome question, Mike. So let's see. What are you not passionate about? <laughs> I'm like somebody like you're like, here's all the things I do. Like, cause usually I ask people what they're passionate, but I'll ask you both what are you not passionate about? Oh man, this okay. So, like you said, there's there's like a surface level answer I could give, right? And then there's like a deeper thing, right? Um, I'm not passionate about boring stuff like budgets, uh, spreadsheets. I've never met a spreadsheet I liked. I know I have to because I'm in business, and so yeah. I have somebody who helps me with all that stuff. Um, I'm just not passionate about people just kind of following the flow because that's what they have been taught or conditioned to believe. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't judge them for it. I'm just, like you said, I'm not I'm just not passionate about it. Yeah. I'm seeing my friends turn into their parents before my very eyes. <laughs> um, this is different because a lot of my friends' parents were immigrants. Mm. So they come here to New Jersey or the New York City area with nothing to their name, work their ass off. 
they'd be like chemists, like university professors, but their credentials wouldn't carry over. So they would open a dry cleaners. Yeah. And they like just hustle and like, like it's a very humble life. Right. And not be able to yeah. speak English. And they live in, you know, do everything they can go into major debt to live in this town so that their kids could go to a good public school and their kids go to a great college, um, get a job in finance in New York and come back literally to the same town. And really all they have is a bigger house <laughs> than they did when they were growing up. Again, I don't judge, but I'm like, man, I don't want to do that. Like, yeah. I please, you know, just, just I don't, I don't want to do that. And I get it because, you know, I don't have kids. Um, and no one who does not have kids will ever understand what it's like to be a parent. I realize that, but I've seen my nephews grow up. Um, I've been in their lives. I know how hard parenthood can be. I see how hard it is on my friends, but there's got to be something deeper than just going and going through the motions. And um, and you've lived in this area. Gosh, it is not easy to be part of the rat race here. No. It's now eighteen dollars to cross the George Washington Bridge. Just go into eighteen dollars. Eighteen dollars. Just insane. think about that. That is a hundred dollars a week. Four hundred dollars a month. Just the drive Just the city to go into the parking. city. Yeah, don't even park. We're not even talking oh parking. Gosh. Yet. And like people think this is okay. Like they're they're like, oh, okay, this is this, this is what it is, right? Yeah. And I'm just like, what how does that make any sense? You know, like, oh uh, so I'm not I'm not very I'm I'm passionate about the opposite of it, which is to like kind of help people wake up and be like, hey, uh, you're more valuable than you think you are. Um and if that's what they want to do, it's totally cool. Look, we need people in every area of society to keep making it work. Um, but th that kind of ideology, that kind of like sort of let's just like live with the snooze button yeah. on the whole time. Like it just I, I it doesn't sit well with me. Yeah. Do you do you recognize that in yourself and your past self or even sometimes today where you feel like you're in that mode? Uh, no, I think I've always been a little bit unconventional and this probably harkens back to, you know, our personality type is pretty similar. Yeah. I remember like when I would go into a corporate job and I, I, my first real corporate job was uh, with Mellon Chase. They've now dissolved, but they were like kind of an investment firm and, and all that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. I was, uh, that's where I learned a little bit of telemarketing and calling clients and blah, blah, blah. And I'm in there. We had a two week training. I passed the test, all that stuff. And we're like a month in. I'm like, I would literally rather die than do this. I would, I'm serious. I mean, I'm going to die one day. I mean, might as it well might be, be here now. my cubicle. Yeah. I mean, it was just, I could not stomach it. Yeah. And that's just me. It was just me. Like, I'm not a typical Korean kid from New Jersey. Like, you're not, you're supposed to go to a good college. I, didn't, I went to a state school. Um, you're supposed to become a lawyer or a doctor. Like, no, you do not want me operating on you or handling <laughs> your legal case, you know? Um, and then I go into music and then I leave that church world, even though I was good at the music part of it, I left it probably while I was at the top or, you know, on a trajectory to keep on growing mm -hmm. and I left it behind. And then I have a hard time explaining what I do to people. Mm -hmm. You should you should hear the conversations I have on dates, dude. Like they were like, so wait, what do what do you do for a living? And I'm like, well, I'm an I, I'm an online educator of marketing and a coach. And like, you're what sport? I'm like, oh no no, it's not like that. It's a uh, business. Like, where'd you go to business school? And like, no, I didn't go to business school. <laughs> and since I wrote the book last year, it's become way easier. I just say I'm an yeah. author. You're and an author. Go, yeah. Oh, what do you write about? I'm like, oh, marketing and blah, blah, blah. Um, and so I feel like uh, I've always been like a square peg trying to fit in a round hole. Yeah. Right. And it's okay. You know, it's That's okay. I, I embrace it. Yeah. Man, I, all that resonates for me, except I'm never going to write a book because I hate writing. You can the hire people like me to, you can hire people like me to write it. You know, yeah, there's a whole exactly. thing out there too, you know? So yeah, exactly. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's so interesting when you're talking about that a lot of times. I do a lot of networking and most of the people I network, which is starting to slow down, but a lot of the networking is, you know, more traditional roles. And they're like, so what do you do? And I'm like, well, yeah, to this week I'm going to speak somewhere and then I'm going to facilitate a group. And they're like, they don't even know what most of these things mean. Right. Cause these are like mm -hmm. people that have like more, much more traditional jobs. So maybe I do need to have something like 
I'm a podcaster. Are people are like, well, anybody could be a podcaster. Yes. See, that's the downside of it. I'm like, oh, I'm a blogger. And then I'm a blogger. The, the girls were like, this is not a good guy to date, you know? <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's just funny how it all works yeah, out. Yeah. That's funny. So, so Mike, uh, what's the thing that you're most proud of besides your Transformers? Hmm. Um, I am most proud of making something of myself and picking myself up during and after the divorce. That is absolutely hands down. Like book, yeah, sure, great. Um, graduating college, sure, great. Uh, but that is hands down the hardest thing I'd ever done. Uh, and while I don't wish it happened, it made me who I am today. So mm-hmm. I embrace it. Um it was like the trauma is like gone, you know, that, that's why, you know, in all seriousness, I've done so many of the psychedelic journeys and blah, blah, sure. blah. It really helped. Um, it was transformational. Yeah. But when I look back on it now that I'm healthier, I'm like, gosh, there was so much that was unhealthy about that dynamic. And then I had to like really forgive myself. Yeah. I thought, yeah, I have to forgive her. But then once I got healthier, I was like, why didn't you like, why did you let this happen? Or why didn't you just say something? And we had like a a very big age gap when we got married. So I got married when I was 27. She was 20. Now, when you're in that age, seven years is an eternity. That's a lot. Yeah. Right now, you know, 40 and 33 or 47 and 40, no big deal. Right. Yeah. But at that time, like, I was just like, okay, she's way, she was in college when we got married. Yeah. So I was like, no, I should just kind of understand, be more understanding, be more lenient. You know, um, she's really young. And then that went on for 10, 12 years. Yeah. And so then I was just like, my counselors would talk to me and be like, hey, you do this or you do that. And we want you to read this and we want you to read that about codependency and, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it was just like, oh, frick. A lot of this is is on me, even though I didn't do the harm to myself directly. Yeah. Um, but I let a lot of it happen. And that was a that was really hard. That was hard. Yeah. But that's what I'm most proud of. And I mean, it's it's kind of dangerous, man. I, I can see through things now so much more quickly. Um, I can see things 10 miles on. I mean, you've been married a while, like it just yeah. like so you know, like they're just things that you like. So that's what I'm most proud of. I see a lot of people kind of going through that. I had mentioned before, like people who come through here in in Jersey and New York at the start of the year. And I think they saw like my journey and they, my friends saw how I handled it and how I started to come out on the other side. It's been over four yeah. years now. And so I'm very proud of that. Um, and I can actually share about it from a place of healing mm-hmm. and wholeness. So yeah. I'm very proud of that. Very well, proud. yeah, Mike. So I want to say, you know, congrats on doing that work because some people never get over that. Hmm. Uh, so congratulations. So now let's now as we're talking about, you know, a little bit of therapeutic stuff, let's go a little bit deeper and find out something that Mike Kim is afraid might actually be true about him. And I'm not going to accept some sort of like, yeah, I know this is true about me. I'm going to we want to see what you're actually afraid might be true about you. That I'm a narcissist. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Yeah. Um, now everyone will tell me I'm not a narcissist, Yeah. but that's what people tell narcissists, yeah. you know, and it gets this really heady space, you know, and I had to study a lot of that stuff in counseling mm-hmm. because, you know, I'm not saying anything bad about anybody else, but my, I had two therapists and they were giving me books to read on this. And they're like, you're a caretaker and your partner may be, you know, have these inclinations and then, of course, what happens, you know, for caretakers, you're just like, oh, wait, I'm saying this about her, but what if that's true of me? And exactly. it's this weird yeah, cycle, right? Um, I'm pretty sure I'm not. Uh, yeah. They would say, they would say, no, narcissists like never admit they're wrong. I was like, oh, okay, that sounds kind of familiar, <laughs> you know? Uh, so I'm like, I think I'm good, but it's just a weird heady place. Yeah. And I think Jason, that comes from a lot from like the church day is like, sure. It was almost like pride was the worst attribute you could have. Oh yeah. You know? And it's just oh, yeah. like weird how that's. Yeah. Happened. Like you can't possibly own your greatness or like tell anybody what you're good at. That would yeah. be, you know, it's like, what is it? Uh, pride cometh before the fall. It's like yeah. a very popular yeah. thing. You know, I'm actually, 
not surprised by your answer. I'll tell you why. Because this question, for people that I know, when I ask it, and by the way, it's like, the reason it's phrases might actually be true, because it might not actually be true. It's like the thing that like you have, it makes a lot of sense that your one of your core values is being a good friend. Because that's about other people. So you put, put a lot of energy externally. Because you know this, you've done the counseling work. We, the thing we're afraid that's true about us, we will overcome, not overcompensate. We'll, we'll show up in the world and compensate for it. And every mm-hmm. single guest I've had on has something. And I'm always like, well, it makes a lot of sense. So I'll ask some people, Hey, how do you compensate for that? And they're like, well, I don't really know if I do. I'm like, mm-hmm. you do, <laughs> but I'll, I'll give you an example for me. Like what I'm afraid, what I'm afraid might actually be true of me is that I'm lazy. So what do I do? I got a lot go- going yeah, on. And I know off, that that's, yeah. But I know that that's, that's, I mean, and I love what I do, so it's great. But I also know that that is a way to overcompensate sometimes for the thing. So thanks for being honest. And um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, when, when I hear people go, oh, like, I'm afraid I might be a narcissist. I mean, we're humans. Like, we're built to take care of ourselves at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, it's funny about that, like, with narcissism is, I haven't studied a lot of it, but. I've had some clients that have come through that like, oh, like they have like therapeutic stuff. Their mom is like a narcissist. Is that a lot of the things that um, in that realm actually just feeds right back into it. Like you said, it's like, um, I was talking about this with, with a client of mine. Her mother was a narcissist and we weren't doing therapy, but she's like, yeah. And like, I became codependent. And so she fulfilled, she filled up my life with what she wanted for me. Mm-hmm. And I let her because I was a kid and I didn't know any better. And she's like, and now I'm 55 and I still do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's trippy. It's it trippy. is trippy, man. It's, it's like, so trippy. and I'll tell you when it becomes very trippy when you have young children like I do and you're like, oh, wait a second. What am I potentially putting into their sphere <laughs> that's going to have them go to therapy? So like last thing I'll say here, is my buddy, Sean, he's, his kids are grown now. They're great, great family. Growing up, he he would tell his kids, he'd be like, they'd come and complain. He'd be like, here's a dollar. Put it in your therapy jar when you're 18. I'll give it to you and go to <laughs> a therapist. They had pretty big jars. To be oh, man. Yeah, no, I mean, I, what I love in all seriousness about where society is going with a lot of, and social media has helped. Yeah. It really has. It's it's allowed these conversations to become mainstream, you know? And yeah, we make fun of people who are like kind of cream puffs and like, you know, come on. Uh, you play for the New York Yankees. Like it's literally your job to perform under pressure. Stop crying that, you know, the fans right. are booing you. Right. I get right. that piece. But um, as a whole, I think it's really good that we're talking about emotional health. Yeah. Um, and we need it. You know, it's a social media is a double edged sword. Um, I can't imagine growing up with, with this as a kid, you know, the, in this world, like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Right. So like, I, I love that about what, podcasts and and new media have done you yeah. know for for the world um yeah. but yeah we all need it we all need it you can have the best parents in the world and you'll you know you'll still need it of course you know so yeah yeah i'm a big fan so mike can we wrap up here today how do you see the world i see the world as now i have to qualify with this all by saying i was born in a first world country <laughs> right like all that yeah. all that jazz right and sure. I, I don't forget that um but i see the world as an abundant and beautiful place and human beings are really good at screwing each other over mm-hmm. you know um i was watching another youtube video but this one wasn't about space i zoned out watching this guy's vlog and he works on a tanker like an oil tanker and just vlogged about this like 60 day journey. And they were sailing from like, you know, Newark, you know, Elizabeth, New Jersey to like Portugal. And he's like filming it and you can't tell it's Portugal. It's just called Portugal because human beings have said, this is Portugal. It's just land. Yeah. And you're just like, when you see the world that way, or when I like am in the plane and looking out the window and you just see land, you're like, this is just beautiful we have created these cultures and societies that sometimes do do a lot of harm to us. Yep. And and that's sad, but I see the world as as a beautiful place to be enjoyed and to be lived in and to be experienced. Beautiful. I I'm with you on that. So let me uh, I'm just going to 
be your hype man here. So everybody check out Mike's book. If you are a, I've read it. Actually, I listened to it. As you can tell, Mike has a nice voice. It's uh, it's a great book if you're a personal. I mean, it's written if you're a personal brand, but it's actually got great marketing content if you're a marketer of any type, marketing, sales. So go check it out. You can get it anywhere. Uh, Amazon. It's called You Are the Brand. It's got a cool black and orange color to it. Looks yeah. really good. Mike, where else can people connect with you? Uh, Instagram is the best at Mike Kim. That's the social media network I'm on the most. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you do want want to do more professional stuff, it's just uh, on LinkedIn, Mike Kim TV. Yeah, Mike Kim TV. It's yep. uh, I've, I've always find that funny that you have Mike Kim TV because I believe in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It's, his name is Mike TV. Is that kid oh, really? who like that. who like yeah he like gets small. He was obsessed with TV. Uh, and also, if you follow Mike on IG, you might get a glimpse of dancing sometime. Potentially, yeah. it's possible. Who knows? Who knows? It's possible. Yeah, who knows? We'll see. We'll see. So, Mike, last question for you, my friend, or not even a question, just a request. Leave us with some words of wisdom that would fit on a post-it note for the older folks who know what that is, or for the younger folks in IG IG uh, feed, not the text. I say this a lot. Life is short. But the longest thing we ever do is so eat great food, spend more time with your loved ones, and never pass up an adventure. Oh, I love that. Life is short, but it's the longest thing we do. That's so good. Mike, I'm glad we finally made this happen. I Can't was honored to, to be here. Uh, Yeah, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Keep doing what you're doing and be an inspiration to all those around you. And, you know, lean into those. I, I think maybe your Transformers is a minor way to get your narcissistic tendencies, which is perfect. <laughs> it doesn't hurt anybody else yeah. at all. And Absolutely. That, and I will see you again soon, my friend. Talk soon, man. See, see ya. ya. Bye. Thanks for listening to another episode of Talking to Cool People with Jason Frizzell. If you enjoyed today's episode, please tell your friends. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook and give us a shout out or take a moment to leave a review on iTunes. If something from today's episode piqued your interest and you'd like to connect, email us at podcast at jasonfrizzell.com. We love hearing from our listeners because you're cool people too.